I'm Lisa Berry. Arlene Schofield. My name is Shireen Snow. My name is Carla A. Miles. This is Diana Camuto. This is Christine Dunford. And me, Eden. Charlie Macy. This is Walker Fannin. Buddy, I'm Camille Dixon. I'm Miss Arlene Wardham. My name is Linda Preston, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Key Fans in Hour. This is episode 459. I am your host, Keith Andrew. Along here is Margaret Newborn. I just want to, Margaret Newborn, I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Not the honor's all mine. You know, for people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even though I've had an award in disability, I can still amount to something. And right. at the same time, I'm able to show people, I actually want me to rephrase that. The whole point of my talk show is to show people that even if I have an award and disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels don't dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's to prove to them you can break the labels. So hashtag break the labels. And you should <laughs> show them of labels don't dictate, as I said, who you are and who you're going to be. I'm still working on the ending, but it, it's pretty much That's just... okay. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty much just saying to never give up and prove people wrong and approve of them. Labels don't not dictate who you are and who you're going to be, and you can break the labels. Might as well keep it like that. <laughs> Make it easier. <laughs> but that being said, half hour every time. That being said, what can you tell us about yourself? Oh, my name's Margaret Newborn. I live in Southern California. I'm an actress. I'm a single mom of four kids, one of which is adopted. They're actually all grown now. I'm 54. Um, I'm just a proud mom. I love my job. And I'm also a member of my church, and I'm in ministry, and uh, I could go on forever. <laughs> I love going on uh, missions trips. Yeah, I love meeting people of different cultures and finding out about people. And also just in, in you know, in my own space, in my own town, whatever. Um, I have a heart for people, you know. Just people are not happy these days, and I try to make people happy. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you some easy questions, some hard-hitting ones. Okay. And the first one I was going to ask you is how was wife growing up, and were you a study nerd or party animal? Um, life growing up was, I had it pretty well. I had it pretty good. Um, I, I grew up in, in, in a family with my mom and my father, and I had two brothers and a sister, and I never wanted for anything. Um, I was kind of a party animal study kid. I mean, I was a great student, awesome student. But in my later high school, well, like my last year or two of high school, I was partying, but not um, not like crazy partying. You know, I you know did the things kids did in the <laughs> you know at parties or whatever. You know, probably drank before I should have, and you know, <laughs> I had a good life. I had a good life. Yeah. Now my next question I was going to ask you: If you could have a drink. With any famous person, past or present, who would it be and why? Who would it be? Famous person? Um, <laughs> I'd like to have a drink with Trump <laughs> so, I, so I could throw it in his face. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, um, gosh, there's so many because, um, wow, the, I don't, well, I would if I could sit down and maybe have a glass of wine with Jesus. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. For me, 
There's a lot of people. But I would say uh, probably Vince McMahon. I would ask him, what was your secret? How did he become this big conglomerate? Um, hey, you want to hook me up with a job? <laughs> and who was that? I didn't hear what oh, you, who you said. Vince McMahon, the owner of WWE. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> Good yep. one. Now, my next question I was going to ask you is who influenced you to start your acting career? And what motivates you to do the best you do? You know, it's funny because I started acting when I was a child, a very young child. And um, I think it's something that's just in my blood. Um, so as a child, getting started, I don't really think I was influenced by anyone in particular. These days, I'm influenced by, um, uh, you know, I say Viola Davis is my spirit animal. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I can't really name one person for being my, my inspiration in the beginning. And what drives me to to be successful and do well is the fact that I'm the one in control of my destiny. Um, things may fall in my path or whatever, but I can't let things stop me from doing what makes me happy and ultimately makes those around me happy. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, my next question I was going to ask you is, what were some of your favorite films that you were a part of? And before you answer that, let me, that's the second part. The first part is, for people who want to follow in your footsteps, did you ever take acting classes, and would you recommend them? Okay, with the acting classes, I would definitely recommend them. I'm actually currently looking for or trying to decide um, where I want to go with more acting classes because it's been a long time since I've been in any um, instructional group. But I would highly, highly recommend it for anyone who wants to be in the industry. And what about who were in the second part of that? So what films were you part of? Oh, gosh. Well, I do... Um, I do I do featured and principal work, but when I'm not doing that because those jobs aren't like guaranteed and not every day, I do background work. So I've worked with, gosh, just about everyone. The only person that I haven't worked with that I would oops I'm sorry that I would love to is Betty White, but um, I've worked with so many. I've worked with Viola Davis. Um, kind of I was kind of a regular on a show that she, How to Get Away with Murder. Um, and that was awesome, just watching her work. I've worked with, I think it would be probably easier if you asked me if I've worked with a certain person. Because I've right. done so many jobs. I have the top five for you. First one, Kevin Spacey. No, I haven't. And I would, well, I would love to have had that opportunity, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, because of his work, you know, not looking at, you know, issues that he's dealing with, but um, because of his work. Um, excellent actor. No, he is. Well, um, Tom Selleck. No, but I, he was my husband when I was a teenager. He doesn't know <laughs> that, but he was, <laughs> he was my husband, so, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, uh, we did House of Cards, Blue Bloods, um, what's about Without a trace. No, not, not without a trace. Uh, person of interest. Person of interest. I've never done that show. I, I have a better idea. Instead of mentioning actors, I'm going to mention shows to you. You need to say yes or no. Okay. That makes it easier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First one, Blue Buds. No. Hawaii Five-0. No. House of Cards. Yes. So you have out. worked with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> I worked House of Cards, oh, that was a while ago, but it was as background, and when you do background work, you don't always see everyone in the cast, you just see who's in the scenes that you're working, so I don't recall ever seeing him. Yeah, right. What about, let's see, whatever um, favorite shows of mine. Um, have you ever done any superhero shows? Superhero shows. Um, I did... <laughs> Again, um, 
I don't know if I can name the name. Well, it's not really a superhero, but it's a Marvel or show that um, is in production right now. I did. I had a little featured role on it. But um, other than that, I don't think I've done any superhero shows. Oh, well, I did Supergirl. Supergirl. I was, uh, I was uh, what did I do on that one? I think I was a bank, a bank um, patron while it was being attacked. <laughs> Have you been, have you gotten a chance to meet Supergirl or the actress who does it? I did. I couldn't tell you what her name is, <laughs> but um, nice girl, nice girl. She was professional and she was very very busy because of their, her stunts and things, and you know, not easily accessible because of that. But I'd say she's, from what I saw, a nice person. <laughs> she's on my things to do list. <laughs> oh really, really. That's awesome. What about <laughs> house and a person of an interest? No. All right. No. Those are two good shows, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a lot of time to watch TV. I try to catch things that I'm on. Um, but because of my schedule, and I don't live in the L.A. area, so I drive quite a ways to work. So I'm either driving at work or trying to catch up on sleep. <laughs> All right. Uh, last uh, one for you. Um, were you on any medical shows so like uh, Chicago PD, um, Chicago Fire, Rescue Me? Were you on any of those? Uh, I've been on, in the last few years, I've been on some. I've been on ER. Um, I've been on, oh, Code Black. I, I did several episodes of that one. Um, awesome show, too. Really, I don't know if you've watched that one, but really good. Oh, what's the other one? Grey's Anatomy. Heard of it. Done Grey's Anatomy. Awesome cast and crew. Um, what other medical shows? That's all I can think of right now. Anything from sci-fi or no sci-fi? No sci-fi. Well, I've done some. I do a lot of... A lot of the work that I do is work that the general public doesn't see because it's independent work or it's short films. And I've done a couple of short film sci-fi shows. Yeah, nice. One of my favorite sci-fi shows was um, Being Human. I've never watched that one. <laughs> it was really good. Bad and grim. Yes, I would love to have been on that one. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's not a funny story for you. Uh -huh. You know, um, if you want to hear it. I'd love to. A while ago, I came across the uh, recruiter who works on Hawaii Five O. You don't mind me at a sudden itch. <laughs> <laughs> I came across this recruiter who was on Hawaii Five O. You know, I, um, I'm you know a big fan. I love it. I would love to work with Steve McGarrett. And that's how I said, you know, the warden disability. Oh, hey, yeah, Steve McGarrett has a disability too. So that's great. But you can oh. you two can work together. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned that, and it's like, okay, can you come down tomorrow? I'm like, okay. Wow. Yeah, five -oh. um, you're in the city, right? Um, oh, no. no, we're in Hawaii. <laughs> uh, let me uh, get out of my imaginary airplane and fly over there. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but, that would have been awesome. Yeah, I would have loved to have been on Hawaii Five-O, but that's the thing. Certain shows only cast in certain areas, you know, like right. New York, you're always going to be on, you know, we have an opportunity to be on Luke Cage, Daredevil, Jessica Jones. Actually, funny enough, I did apply to be on Jessica Jones. I never heard back. Oh. And, um, you know, Blue Bloods, uh, if you're in Chicago, you know, Chicago Med, Chicago PD, Chicago Fire. Stop. Uh, Portland, you know, oh. at the time it was grim. And in Hawaii, they only look for people in Hawaii for five o. So it depends on the certain area. Yeah, and now we have um, New Mexico is um, growing big in the industry, and Georgia, um, which is kind of a bummer um, being an actress in Hollywood, you know, because um, a lot of shows are not accessible for us that. Would have been. <laughs> but they can get cheaper work out there, so. That's true. Now, the next hard-hitting question i got to ask you is, have you ever been stereotyped for a certain role? 
<laughs> well, for a certain role, I think that's that's a given for for everyone because um, as far as um, being chosen for a role, they're looking for not all the time. Sometimes it's just basic. Sorry about the sirens. <laughs> yeah, it makes it more fun. <laughs> but I'm. I mean, I play. I play a homeless person a lot. I'm. Um, if you watch shows and you see homeless people, look for me. <laughs> and <laughs> or or druggy. I play a druggy a lot. Um, and 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 of course, druggies and home home <laughs> homeless people are, are pretty much stereotyped because of. Um, well, we don't look for them to be, you know, well, like that, that's not right. I, I was going to say black, but there's a, I'm usually the only black one there. But. Well, you can be when, completely honest. Yeah. Well, in being homeless, not so much, but being a druggie or being a, um, what they call a downscale or, or low budget person. Um, you'll see a lot of black people. You'll see a lot of people of other other too. But I can, if I see an opportunity for one of those roles, um, I mean, I can be pretty or I can be downscale. But um, <laughs> I do fit the bill when I, if I put on the right clothing or don't have makeup on or you know, muss my hair. That kind of stereotyping. But I really don't call it that in the business because they're looking for a a specific character. And if you fit that character, but I'm not just um, pigeonholed into that. I play a lot of, um, I play a nurse a lot. I play a parent or a school teacher as well. So I'm not, I guess I'd have to say, no, I'm not being stereotyped. Yeah, <laughs> I that. agree. You know, you can turn that around on me, you see, because I have a learning disability. I'm always going to play the one with the disability. Or recently, someone said to me, "You are more. You, you look more like a techie." All right, can I be a supporting role techie, or am yeah. I gonna be like a wacky tacky? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. But to me, you know, it depends. You know, with the glasses on, you know, I do look like I can either be like a techie, but with my glasses off, it kind of looks like I can be a supporting role actor. Or Definitely. there's nothing wrong with wearing glasses and being some supporting role actor. Well, I think nowadays things have changed so much, which is good, to where the old Hollywood starlet or or what do you call him, um, handsome man, whatever the term is for that, is kind of out the door. Um, you can you can have Down syndrome even and play. A principal role which is awesome we're seeing a lot more people of color and of different cultures in roles so I wouldn't limit yourself to just a supporting actor you know um, you never know what's what's going to be out there for you no absolutely and when I do projects and everything you know I always get you know now I can say yeah, so I'm like an oxymoron but you know I always cover my bases you know white, black, Spanish, Asians I get one of each because it's always better to have one of each. If you kind of have just a certain role for certain groups, it's kind of gets to blend after a while. So if you have like a mixture of everything, you can have more fun with it. If that makes and you can sense. Appeal, you can appeal to the masses that way too. Right. You, know, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're closing yourself off from exposure to... Well, to any group. Now, the next question I've got to ask you, then we're going to take a quick commercial break, is I always say to people, I like giving people an opportunity. Like, most of the time, I would approach someone, or in your case, you approached me. And I'm very thankful for that. Oh, thank you. And I always say, you know, I'm, well, I'm the type of person that says, you know, you live once. I want to make a difference in somebody's life. No big, <laughs> no big, uh, why am I saying no big? No difference, I want to rephrase that. I have woken at the time, I'm in a rust for work too. Uh -huh. All right, so let me get this straight. We live only once and I like to make a difference in somebody's life, no matter how big or small it is. 
and I like to be remembered for summer. I can't speak. But it's probably because my ears suck, but I'm throwing me off. Well, you're making sense. <laughs> That's true. I have my moments. At least I'm not sounding like Porky Pig. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so the point is, you live only once, and it doesn't. a good deed never goes undone. It's the thought that counts. It doesn't matter if it's something big or something small. When I die, I would like to be remembered for something. And... You know, I always say, you know, it doesn't matter, white, black, Spanish, Asian, whatever. You give me respect, I give you respect. You want to be on the show? Okay. And, you know, there are certain people that it kind of bothers me. Like, you know, uh, I won't mention it on the air, but there's certain roles that bother me. But I will interview that person regardless because I will be the bigger person. And it's just like, I don't want to be a hypocrite because you just said you would interview everyone. Now you're saying there's certain people that bother you. Right. <laughs> with that being said, what is your honest opinion? Because I was always against this, and at least in a way, I asked another actor this, and I asked it. Basically, I asked the guy from, um, oh shit, what, what was the show? He was a detective, and um, I forgot what Marvel show. He was a detective. And I said to him, do you think I should interview child actors? And number one, if they have disabilities, yeah, because they, it fits my cause. But do you think I should interview child actors or do you think it's kind of borderline kind of creepy? Because I was always against it. So I always just want to know your um, opinion. Now against? Interviewing I, I, child actors. Should there be child actors? No, so I mean? interview them. Oh, should you interview them? I I don't see a problem with that as long as there's a parent or guardian present. Yes. I don't see why not. I don't see I don't see why not. Um I would be careful, you know, just make sure that your your interview subjects are um or your the subjects that you talk about are age appropriate? Um, why not? Kids, kid act, child actors do interviews, so yeah, do it. Hey, because recently I talked to Paul, on my Twitter, it's like I was looking for people's support. It's like, should I interview child actors? Yes or no? Apparently, no one answered. So that was a big <laughs> sign that says, <laughs> "Don't do it." But like I said, I interview everyone, so everyone's more than welcome. I would ask, like, if someone um, says no, maybe ask what the thinking is behind that. Um, to just give a yes or no, or actually to give a no on something that you're thinking of doing, um, it should come with some, some reasoning, or at least be, you should be able to see where they're coming from with that answer. No, absolutely. You know, I'm not like a scumbag or a pedophile or a piece of shit or anything. You know, I, I'm very professional and I can make it a cause for people's disabilities. And hey, you want to be on the show, you're more than welcome to, as long as you have a good story and you're professional. But at the same time, it, it's, I'm very picky on who I interview because if there's no chemistry or if I don't like something, because I would like to look for something that helps me. Say, oh, you're a dancer. Okay, come on the show. We can talk about that. If you just say, I'm nothing like a normal person, but yet you don't tell me anything about yourself, it's kind of like I'm setting myself up for failure, if that makes any sense. It does. I think um, a really good idea would be to have uh, maybe a pre-interview type thing, you know, get to know that person a little bit get to know a little bit about them and ex make sure that they understand who you are and then have your your tape interview or video interview. That makes sense. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break and when we come back I'm going to pass the show over to you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Russo, me, Mark Medley. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Neely. Barry Pavic. This is Peter Bruto. My name is Kyle Collier. This is Luis Santiago, uh, better known as Dynamite. I'm Richard Epcar. Mark This is Gary and Mayhan. This is Goldar. And we both support Keith 
Andrew. My name is Ron Wasserman, and I am supporting Keith Andrew and what he is doing. And you better do the same, or I'm going to come kick your ass. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. This is episode 459. I'm here with the talented and beautiful Margaret Newborn. I just want to say thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> Now, with the last seven minutes left of the show and counting, I'm going to pass it over to you. Was there anything you want to talk about, promote, you say? You can say anything you want, freedom of speech, uncensored, freedom of speech, self-expressing, right. and you can ask me anything you want, gloves off. Well, um, one question I have for you is, and and I've recently come upon you and, and your, your social media and such. And I was, like I told you, I was really inspired. I'm always inspired by people that kind of just trudge forward no matter what and don't let um, disabilities or such um, stand in their way. And if it does stand in their way, climb over it. But my question is, um, what inspired you to go public? you know, on social media and such, and and share your thoughts and ideas. All right. Um, there's a lot of different inspirational stories. Uh, I used my dad for an inspiration. I used my brother for an inspiration. I used my sister for an inspiration. Um, I got tired of using my learning disability as a crutch. And it all started as a birthday wish, too. So oh. it depends on which one you want to hear. But <laughs> the biggest one out of next to the birthday was would it be I got tired of using my disability as a grudge. The long story short, this trying to catch my breath. Long story short is I would sit with my family during dinner, and one of my other brothers would say, "I don't know what to do with my wife. I don't know what I'm doing." And so my dad's like, oh, you can talk to him, you can talk to her, she knows people, they know people. He said, go take the um, state exam. And I said, what about me? And everyone would stop and say, and look at me, like, what about you? One, you're not educated. Two, you piss people off. It's okay, sometimes the whatever I do it to get a reaction. <laughs> uh, I piss people off. Like I said, sometimes the whatever sometimes not. Because I have poor mannerisms. Um, I have poor uh, social skills. I read and learn at a fifth grade level. I was never good enough to go to college. Um, I suffer from depression. I was labeled as mentally disturbed, mentally disconnected, handicapped, retarded. And I was always threatened to be put in a group home and I was going to be a burden for someone. Oh. And I made up my mind and I said, screw it. Actually, I said, fuck it. <laughs> I said, fuck <laughs> it. You know what? If that's really what you think of me, I'm going to show you what's a disability. I can still amount to something. And I'm going to make you eat those words. In four and a half years, in this June will be five. I'll pat myself on the back for that. This um, June will be officially five years. But right now, for the past four and a half years, if I'm doing 72, don't ask me why I seem like a, I wish I had a dollar for every time I said this. I, I did 72, don't ask me why, and this is where the dollar part comes in. Don't ask me why, but if I can say it was a straight face. I started my talk show via phone, and I did 72 phone interviews. I got people from Mighty Morphin Fire Rangers, Dragon Ball Z, Amazing Spider-Man. And I, I always got, because of the time I wanted to work this blog talk radio, and but at the same time, I was still having panic attacks. I was still having social anxiety. Yeah, I'd be sitting there like this on uh, listening to the phone. But yeah, I'm still having I don't know what's attacks. Right. And I'm like, I'm on the freaking phone. <laughs> what's the problem? Why am I still having an anxiety attack? And um and you know I have no filter. And I say um, one guy said to me, "You have this great format. Why aren't you as big or bigger?" When you portray yourself to be, why don't you have people helping you? Why don't you have sponsors? Would you like to help me with that? No, no, if you can't meant to be, it's been it's not meant to be. I used to hang up, you know, I'd say, yeah, thanks a lot, asshole. <laughs> 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 you could, I, I never said that to him in person, but, you know, I was thinking it, just telling you the truth. 
And one person said to me, why don't you try do it over and try a different approach to it? And I'm like, okay, what can I do about that? And it's like, well, let's do video instead of audio. And with that being said, you know, I got up to 300 interviews. And, you know, still people were saying to me, you're not copyrighted, you're not trademarked, you know, you're manipulating people, you're... You're stalking people. What? Because oh. I use the LinkedIn, and uh, there's a little trick if I learn with LinkedIn, uh. I'll tell you afterwards, is I uh, <laughs> keep a little secrets to myself. <laughs> and so basically, you know, I wasn't taking people at, I was taking people at their word. Say, so, you know, if I met you the first time, hey, can we do the interview? Yes, or, you know, bing, bang, boom. Uh, a week later, yeah, you know, my agent said, my publicist said, we don't like the video colony because when we first started, it's see what you see on the camera. It's this is the camera. It picks up on the computer screen. Uh, you ask a lot of stupid questions. We don't like the video quality. We don't want to be seen with people like you. You're degrading. It's stupid. And so I took everything down. I went to a lawyer, senior advisor, and a Poor thing was in New York or Florida, wherever he was. And I said, can I ask you a couple questions? And he said, yeah. And it's like, free of charge. <laughs> That's good for me. <laughs> so with that being said, I said, uh, do I have to be trademarked? He said, no. Because you have an online presence. People know who you are. It said, do I need to be uh, Actually, no. That was copyright. Do I need to be copyright? He said, no. Because people know who you are. You're online. Trademark, you're, it's $2,000. You're not making any money, so it's no reason to. And then he said, your biggest regret, or mistake, regret to me, I really like, your biggest mistake was that you were not having people sign permission forms. So now I have a binder filled. As a, this is season five, so I have binders filled of permission forms, and I have it say... Here's my name. Here's the concept of the show. Either handwritten or not, you're gonna type and date. If once you do that, it's a done deal. Because I was getting people, you know, making idle threats to me, take it down, we're gonna sue you. So I was like, it's like this guy, a perfect example, this guy came to me yesterday and said, Yeah, you know, my interview, can you take it down? And I said, Nope, absolutely not. You want me to edit it? I am willing to edit it. I'm willing to redo it over, but the interview's mine. You know, it's professional. There's nothing wrong with it. And if there is a problem with it, I will edit it. But you signed a permission form, and I told you, once you sign, like I did with you, once you sign a permission form, that's it. Done deal. You know, if you say, like tomorrow, you know, or a week later, you know, it wasn't that good. Can we re-edit it? Okay, fine, because it's still in an open window. Coming to me two years later and saying to me, yeah, do it over, I'm like, okay, one, I don't use that format anymore. I don't use that introduction anymore. I don't do any of that anymore. And, and it's, if it was a big issue, you would have came to me before the two freaking years. You wouldn't have said, well, it was fine, and wait two years, and then be like, well, would, would you mind taking it down? I'm like, no. That's my new thing now. I'm going to say no. You sign the form, done deal. I rewatched the interview, and I noticed it was re-editing or re-repeating. Uh, you know, so basically, I'm willing to re-edit it, shorten it, but taking it down, it's not. Because you signed the form, because all you're doing is wasting my time. I, I couldn't really understand why somebody would want something taken down unless maybe they had a um, point of view that was not, um, I don't want to say PC, but uh, say you had an Aryan, you inter in interviewed an Aryan, and now um, that person has changed their ways and is no longer an Aryan. I wouldn't really see a need to take it down, but an opportunity for another interview. Yeah, you know? just do a follow-up. Yeah. So... Uh, I know, people like, that's like making idle threats to me. It really gets annoying after a while. 
Just ignore it. <laughs> just ignore it and move on. You know, there's always going to be some lumps and bumps and, you know, just count that as those. And um, from what I've seen, I'm, I, I'm just impressed with you. Um, like you said, people were shooting you down and, and really it sounded like you didn't have a support system, which is unfortunate. And um, that's what we need to be. That's what we all need to be to people is a support system. Um, even if it's people that we're, we're not like, um, we need to be a support system. We need to, um, uh, there's a lot of hate in this world. Yeah. You know, a lot of hate in our country. I have a, my, my youngest brother was murdered by white supremacists. Um, I don't wish hell and broom fire on them. I pray for them, the bad guys. I'm, you know, I want justice to to prevail, of course, in our ju judicial system as well as the final justice. But um, I don't hate those people. I mean, we, we need to get rid of hate and just hurtful stuff. Unless you're talking about Trump. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we shouldn't hate. I don't hate him. I hate that he's um, in the White House. I hate that people are letting this, him happen, but I don't hate him. You know, yeah. it, that tells you what I feel about hate. Unfortunately, I voted for him. And the reason I voted for Trump is because the other candidate ran a crappy-ass campaign, and she didn't want it. And there were so much of scandals about, you know, the Clintons and everything. It's kind of like, and people were tired of, personally, I would rather have Obama back in the White House over Trump. Um, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I didn't really always agree with him. I didn't like the fact Obama always stuck his nose in certain things. It's like, mm -hmm. you're a president. Why are you sticking your nose in this? That's nothing to do with you. And, but oh. he wanted, he, he, I did like the fact he wanted to be a, a celebrity. That's fine. But at the <laughs> same time, if there's, you know, about the whole, if you don't want to talk about it, I apologize. But yeah, I, I will it real fast. Uh, the whole Ferguson thing, he had no reason to be part of that. Or the, the cop in and, and the, the kid had nothing to do with that. And it, just the fact he injected himself into that, that's where people are like, are you a celebrity or are you the president? I never saw that view, but I do understand that, you know, we all have different views. Um, the thing is, you know, with him, especially with him being a black president, you know, which is a major milestone, we all know that, um, no matter what he did, he was going to be not liked. He was going to be hated um, by some, by many. And also with things happening in the black community, of course, not everything's being handled correctly by, by our um, leaders or by us, the people, um, him being a black president, I, I feel that he, he had to put himself out there for that stuff. But again, you know, him being black was a challenge in itself. He could have been the most wonderful, perfect, you know, if there were, it was a perfect person to be our president. Well, I think he kind of was, but, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what he did. You know, he could have created world peace. People would hate him. People would hate him. But this orange thing, <laughs> he, he, just, he doesn't have the qualifications. He's, um, it's more than more than scandal. I mean, he's just a, exhibited himself to be a rotten person, you know. And he doesn't have the qualifications to run a country. He's, anyway, don't get me started. I don't care to <laughs> get into that mindset. for next time. <laughs> yeah. But personally, I would rather have Obama back as the president. I would rather have George W. Bush, even though they made fun of him too, you know, the cowboy and, you know, the R word, you know. But, you know, there's certain things you could have looked over, but this is about smuck. But it's kind of like, eh, I we can talk you. about that. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> but I do have a couple questions for you off the air about wrapping up. Um, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on LinkedIn, Twitter, States32? I'm on Twitter at Spinborn, Instagram at Spinborn. 
I'm on Facebook with my name, Margaret Newborn. Um, I'm on IMDb. Just punch in my name, check me out, view some stuff. And I'm on LinkedIn, but I don't use it. You know, I have an account, but I don't use it. And Twitter, I believe, is Spinborn, too. I use Spinborn for just, if it's not my name, it's Spinborn. <laughs> no, one more question. No, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, I'm on Facebook quite a bit. Um, that's the one I use the most. Yeah. Right. There's a, there's another, there's an app that I downloaded and you just upload silly videos. It's called Hipstar or Hypestar, H-Y-P-S-T-A-R. Check that out. Is it good or is it fun? It's kind of like Vine, but the videos are longer ah. and you just post, I post silly stuff mostly or, you know, like I have a couple where, you know, I'm in heavy face and body makeup and I show that show them taking it off you know just things that might make people go oh check that out you know my last question for you wrapping up our interview segment when I first well you usually I approach people but in this case when you first approached me what was your first reaction and what made you say yes to do the interview and after doing the interview how do you feel now well, my first reaction when, um, well, first I had to tell you that, you know, I just thought, well, you inspire me. And I think that's, that. well, that I know that's just part of my personality. Um, you inspired me. I want to let you know that. And um, maybe give you a, hey, you know, <laughs> um, when you contacted me back and asked me to interview, interview you, I thought, well, why not? What, you know, there's no harm in it. You know, I have, I'm, there's no harm in it, so... And now after doing it, I'm even more interested in you, and I can't wait to like follow up on more that you do and maybe um, talk with you some more. No, absolutely. Now stay tuned for <laughs> after the show. I do have a couple questions for you, but wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege to have you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Awesome. Thank you. Me too.